Hey, I'm Danny. I retired at age 37. Uh, I talk about money. I talk about all the ways that we can get out of debt, to put your money to work for you, and retire early. And wait a minute, that's Grow Wealth Within. Sorry, that's my that's my other channel. Let's try that again. Hey, I'm the Kiki Poly Atheist. I dispel shame around sex, relationships, and spirituality. Welcome to the show. And hold on. Dang it, no, that's the wrong channel again. Hey, I'm Danny, AKA Topless. I'm hiking the Pacific Crest Trail from Mexico to Canada. I'm 1,374 miles in, uh, currently in the town of Old Station. We met some hikers last night, uh, had a great dinner, um, and it also included a couple of van life people that they got a hitch from two days ago and have just been hanging out with and partying with since. So that's a lot of fun. I'm not sure where we're going this morning. Uh, my intention was to get up early and get walking, but I had so much fun with these, this group last night that I'm thinking about suggesting we all go to breakfast at eight o'clock, which was something I was originally against. <laughs> they also said there's a lava tube close by, so I might check that out. Although I've seen lava tubes before in Hawaii, uh, like I said, I'm retired, so um, I live off my investment portfolio and I basically do whatever I want all the time. Uh, my motto, or the thing that I was shooting for, my vision for many, many years was every day is Saturday and that's where I'm at. So um, you can check that out on my other channel, growwealthwithin.com uh, and I teach investing and how you can retire early. Oh, wow. And also, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. Oh, that's there. So there it goes. Oh, my camera had it for a second. There is uh, a sun behind me, but also lots of smoke. So in that direction, there's a forest fire. I hiked through it yesterday, not the fire, sorry. I hiked through a lot of the smoke yesterday. Uh, you can see my video from yesterday about that, but it's clearly, it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bigger than it was last night. So it's still happening, it's still blowing in this direction and I don't plan on staying here too long today because I walked through so much smoke yesterday that it left my throat really, really dry, like all day. I, I just kept drinking water just to try and soothe my throat and it wasn't working. So I don't want to get caught in the smoke again. But yeah, my right now my plan is to do 22 miles a day, six days a week to get to Canada before the last week of September, where I have tickets to Synergy, which is the Vegas regional for Burning Man. So anyways, that's a quick recap. We'll see how today goes. I just remembered I have a project. So check out this shirt. This is like a UV protection kind of shirt. Uh, I forget how much it costs, but it wasn't cheap. Um, the hood is for the sun. The long sleeves, they're for the sun. This is not like a winter shirt. I'm finding that I'm walking around with my sleeves rolled up and it's a little too hot right now because I'm in the shade. It's hot, but I'm not in the sun, so I don't quite need it. If you look here, I'm wearing two shirts right now. So I've got a, a red t-shirt made out of the same material that I got out of a hiker box way back in Bishop. And I've got this shirt that I bought. What I'm thinking of doing, because the last couple days I've been hiking in the red shirt, I'm thinking of turning this shirt into a shrug. And if you don't know what a shrug is, a shrug is something that my really fancy X taught me. <laughs> um, it's basically sleeves. So it's like these sleeves and I don't know if a hood is included in, in shrugs or not, but it's something that uh, a woman would wear with a dress. So say she's going to a fancy place like a symphony and she's wearing a sh like a sleeveless dress or a slap strapless dress. She's going to get cold from here up. So they make something called a shrug, which is like a sweater that is just basically a pair of sleeves and it's really, really short. It's not like, it's not, it doesn't come all the way down to here. It just like maybe comes to like here. Um, anyways, <laughs> I'm explaining a shrug. Uh, <laughs> welcome to my channel, everybody. Uh, I'm thinking of just cutting this shirt right about here, like right at the nipples and turning it into a shrug. Uh, that way I can hike in the red shirt, which is a t-shirt, and if I get to a spot that's sunny, uh, I can just throw this on and just turn the short sleeve into a long sleeve with a hood. Um, also, I am noticing that it is kind of warm. Um, it's cold right now, and that's why I put it on. 
So it's doing its job. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna throw away that bottom piece of fa fabric because that's weight that I have to carry and that does suck. <laughs> so that's my project right now. All right, so this is gonna be either brilliant or foolish. I'm gonna go with foolish. <laughs> But it gets the job done, and all of this, I don't have to carry. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw it out right now. So everybody showed up for breakfast. <laughs> Things we just found out. The Dixie Fire has reached mega fire status, is that what you said? Which means it's 100,000 100, acres or 100,000 square acres? Doesn't matter. 100,000 things. I think acres is it. There is no such thing as square. There's no such thing as a square acre. You're right, no, an acre is a square. Yeah, okay, yeah. So 100,000 acres is now the fire that we're hiking away from very slowly. <laughs> and then the water cache that's coming up, we just had somebody tell us that it's been refilled because it was empty three days ago. So we are good to go on that. It sounds like a lot of us are going to stop for a lot of times. So Okay, we got more news. Timothy Olsen, you said Timothy Allen Olsen, uh, the guy who was running to break the record, just got to Canada, and it sounds like he broke the record. They have to confirm, but it's like 51 days and 16 hours or something like that. And he's the one who was running by in one of my videos, and I actually pulled him over for a selfie, which turned into a video. So I've got that video, and I'll link it in the description. That's pretty incredible. He was doing, I think you guys were just saying, he was doing two marathons a day. For like a hundred days, it's just incredible. So he's doing like fifty something miles. Yeah, two marathons a day for fifty two days. Two, oh yeah, yeah. One hundred and one marathons. Yeah, one hundred and one marathons back to back. Oh my god. So yeah. So there you go. So okay. So at breakfast, people just kept showing up. Uh, a wall showed up, uh, and then Emma pulls up with her dad. Apparently, they dropped Rudolph and uh, six or four pack off in Truckee, like back at Donner Pass or whatever, like a day or two ago, and they've already done their hike to Sierra City, so Rudolph is supposedly gonna show up here sometime today, which means, since he's so fast, he's probably gonna pass me either by the end of the day or tomorrow. So that'd be cool to see Rudolph again. And now it seems like everybody's gearing up to go to the lava tubes which is called The Cave or something like that on Gut Hooks. So, we'll check it out. Yeah, it looks like we're doing a quick uh, resupply over here. Oh, there's Happy! And we're off to the caves. It's about 10 a.m. I think there was a section where it's a cave. <laughs> we walked through, but like, mostly... <laughs> I wonder if caveman came here. Um, Alright, we, we found the cave. Alright, I don't expect the light to be good enough once we get in there. But this is a lava tube. You can see Wonder Woman and Zooty's lights up ahead. Wow, the ground is really bumpy. So here's, here's the cul-de-sac, friggin' huge. Watch your head. Okay, Zudi just called it out. You can see that this was lava that was flowing and then stopped and cooled. And that's why the ground is so bumpy. It, like, it cracked and stuff as it cooled. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm literally walking on what used to be a lava river. Okay, this direction is smoky, but watch when I point towards the fire. Yeah, it's getting pretty rough over there. It was not even that bad yesterday when I was walking through the smoke. So we're gonna get rolling. So yeah, the, the photo doesn't quite do it justice. It's pretty, pretty, Ominous. <laughs> Here we go, the trees opened up a little bit. Man, 
Well, this is where we started. Let me start here. You know, we just got to the top of this hill and you could just see smoke in every direction. It really makes the green pop. Yeah. Like way over there, the way we're going, you can see a little bit of blue. But the smoke just continues. 360 degrees. We're under a giant smoke cloud. Yeah, she's gonna make her way to Alright, we're definitely getting further away from the fire, which is behind me right now. Uh, I'd say we're about, I think, six miles in to our hike today. And uh, I wanted to mention one thing that I can't really get on video, but little tiny pieces of ash are falling. And it's not as much as like snow. It's as much as when it's just starting to snow or it's just about to snow. And you'll see like two or three flakes go by and go, oh wow, look, it's about to snow. It's like that. And it's been consistent with these little tiny pieces of gray ash. So that's been kind of neat, but also kind of unnerving. Uh, when we woke up this morning, a couple people noticed that they had ash on their tent, like snow. So yeah, that's an interesting little detail. I also had a fun conversation with the people I'm hiking with right now. Turns out, they're both either the retired or semi-retired and just basically one of them's doing adventures, has done surfing around the world six months at a time, has lived in other countries, and one of them is just now learning what it's like to not have a job and be able to do whatever you want. So uh, we were talking to them a little bit about like adventures and living on a boat and things like that. And it turns out they both have ideas. They both know people who have done it, so I'm hoping to get their contact info. Um, before I forget, uh, oh, he, they gave me a good website. It was like uh, findacrew, findacrew.com could be a website to check out to basically crew a boat and learn how to, how to sail. So yeah, pretty exciting. So one thing I've noticed, with the, the smoke like this, it's about four o'clock right now, but all day long it has felt like dusk, or that feeling where it's like, it's just getting dark and it's about to rain, but it's not gonna rain because it's too warm. That's what it's been like all day. I wonder what it's like on a non-smoky day. Totally surrounded by these quail. All right, I'm just leaving the water cache, and uh, that was about 16 miles for today. I'm gonna go another 3.3, I think, and uh, camp. Uh, the uh, those quail were cool. Like, they're, they're called mountain quail, and a group of them is called a cubby. And uh, I didn't quite get any footage of them running, I don't think. But basically, they have two modes. They have be cute and peck around, almost like a chicken. <laughs> and then they get scared, and they run full out. Like, they put their head forward. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, like, 
You know, like when a chicken moves, it bobs its head when it walks. Well, they put their head straight forward and they just run. And it's almost cartoony. And you can hear their feet slapping the ground so hard to keep them moving. Oh, here's a great view. So yeah, the quail are really cute. And they're running around across the road and stuff. Look at the sun. And as soon as everybody left, I was just kind of sitting there on my tarp thinking, well, I guess I should get up and get moving. And then they just kind of like slowly worked their way in to get to the water from the, uh, the cache that was just dripping there. So I just figured, well, I'll just sit here and get footage of all these quail. But I was completely by surrounded by them. And they make like the, the, such a really cute, like little, it's not a bird noise, but it's a bird. It's, it was really cute. So anyways, right now I'm walking 3.3 miles to get to the next campsite. And I'm just gonna call it a day there. Since we did so much yesterday, doing a little less than 20 is no big deal today. We're gonna get to Bernie tomorrow. At the moment, I'm 17 miles away. So after I get to the campsite, I'll be 14 miles away for tomorrow. And uh, from what I hear, it's easy to get vortexed at Bernie. So we'll see what happens there. <laughs> oh, one neat little piece of information. I happened to be at the water cache and I asked everybody, what kind of music you guys like? And someone said they like electronic. And I said, I've, I've been stuck on Grizz lately like this. I got this great playlist somebody recommended. And he said, uh, I love Grizz. And he actually came out with a new album like today or yesterday. I was like, what? So as soon as I get to town, I have a signal again, I'm gonna get his new album, which I'm very excited about. And uh, the hiker was telling me that <clears throat> there's like a festival this September, like coming up in a couple weeks, and he's actually gonna go. It's in Ohio or something like that, because Grizz is on the, on the lineup. So that's pretty sweet. So anyways, stuff, things, people. <laughs> well, I just saw a really sick, scary sight. Something in a bush on the side of the trail moved, and when I looked, it was a skunk with its tail up and its butt pointed at me. And I was like, oh crap. And it just kind of like, there was like a silent standoff, and then it scurried away. Thank goodness. <laughs> All right, so full disclosure, ever since the water cache, as soon as I sat down, my stomach's been bothering me. I feel like it's something I ate. And uh, my lunch had like one or two different items in it. So hopefully that's all it was. But I'm totally sapped for energy. And uh, my stomach is like hurting. I do have some meds with me that I already took. But it's been, it's been slow moving for these last three miles to get to this campsite. And as soon as I get there, and I'm just gonna lay down. So, thankfully I've got a lot of water, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just moving slow. So, we'll see if these meds help me out. I'm already halfway to the campsite, so I got one and a half miles left. So, I'm just gonna keep pushing. Here's an incredible, just like a lava rock field. In all directions. All right, I made it to camp, got a tent up, made it to bed. Now I'm just gonna crash. <laughs> 